Good morning. Today is Saturday, the 24th of October. It's a feria in the 29th week of the church's year, and it's a memorial of St. Anthony Mary Claret. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty, ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours, and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading continues in Ephesians, and here Paul is talking about the unity and the peace we find being a member of the church. He first of all, talks about all the different roles we have together in the church. So that the saints together make a unity in the work of service, building up the body of Christ. In this way, we are all to become, all to come to unity in our faith and in our knowledge of the Son of God, until we become the perfect man, fully mature with the fullness of Christ himself. Then we shall be children no longer, tossed one way or another and carried along by every wind of doctrine, the mercy of all the tricks that men play and their cleverness in practicing deceit. If we live by the truth and in love, we shall grow in all ways into Christ, who is the head by whom the whole body is fitted and joined together, every joint adding to its own strength, for each separate part to work according to its function, so the body grows until it has built itself up in love. The Word of the Lord. The Gospel continues in Luke, chapter 13, verses 1 to 9. Some people arrived and told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with that of their sacrifices. At this he said to them, Do you suppose these Galileans who suffered like that were greater sinners than any other Galileans? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those eighteen on whom the tower at Siloam fell and killed them, do you suppose they were more guilty than all the other people living in Jerusalem? They were not, I tell you. No, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. He told them this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it, but found none. He said to the man who looked after the vineyard, Look here, for three years now I have been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree, and finding none. Cut it down. Why should it be taking up the ground? Sir, the man replied, leave it one more year and give me time to dig round it and manure. It may bear fruit next year. If not, then you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. So the readings today, in a sense, both complete what the message has been all week. In Ephesians, Paul is exhorting the the people of Ephesus, the Christians, to be together, to be unified, to work closely with each other, to be patient with each other. And he gives them this idea of the body of Christ, and each of them is on a spiritual journey, giving what they can to building up the body of Christ, who is the head and bringing all together, and that they will find peace and unity living out their Christian lives by being members of the community, the church. And in the Gospel, Luke is carrying on trying to impress upon people the importance of repentance now and not to delay. He uh, gives the example of the two bad things that happened in Jerusalem and then says, but you better prepare, otherwise you all might, all might perish. And then he gives that wonderful example of the fig tree, a less, gent a less stark form than in Matthew. And here when the owner of the vineyard says, cut down the fig tree, it's no good, it's not producing any figs. The, the gardener says, give me another chance. I'll put some manure around it, dig around it, give it some special water, etc. Try to get it going. And if in a year's time it still hasn't produced, then you can cut it down. And I think that's a parable for us, that God is merciful. He does expect us to change, he does expect us to produce fruit, but is understanding if there's a delay, 
but the delay can't go on too long. So it's back to Paul's question, and um, big part Luke's, and uh, not question, but Luke's affirmation, name of Jesus. Now is the time to repent and turn to the Lord anew. Something we're called to do at all times, but especially in this season as we approach the end of the year and the Feast of Christ the King. Just to go off on a slight tangent, but as a hospital chaplain, this passage is often quoted in the following circumstance. Often with patients, we find them lying in bed, sometimes with terminal diseases or very serious diseases, and they're saying, it's all my fault. I did something morally wrong, I broke the commandments sometime in my life, and now God's punishing me. And it's a very common experience among people, the sense that I deserve the, this illness because of something moral that I did, immoral, I did during my life, and now God's punishing me. And it's our role as chaplains to say, no, that's not how God is with us. He doesn't wait till we get a bit later on in life and then say, oh, look what you did. I'm going to get you for this and send you some punishment. Because the example is uh, Jesus asked that the, the people who got killed by the pilot soldiers or the people who fell under the stones that when the wall tumbled down, the Tower of Siloam, he says they weren't any worse sinners than anybody else. It's, that's not how God works. I do have to add a rider to that though. Somebody's lying in bed saying, oh, God's punishing me because I've got cirrhosis of the liver and it's all due to alcohol. And you talk a bit more and you find that they, they drank uh, three bottles of gin for most of their life. Then you do agree with them and say, yes, perhaps you did bring this upon yourself. So there's a distinction between, shall we say, what people did physically for their health, but not morally in the sense that they believe that God is punishing them. Because that stops them coming back to God. And the whole point is to make them at peace with God, that even in their terminal illness, God is there with them and for them. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response is, Open to us the treasures of your love. Open to us the treasures of your love. Christ became man to make us sons of God, and he intercedes for us before God our Father. Let us thank him for his loving mercy and pray, open to us the treasures of your love. You have enlightened us in baptism. We consecrate our day to you. Open to us the treasures of your love. Fill us with praise of you today. May we take your word with us wherever we may go. Open to us the treasures of your love. Teach us to respond to your word like Mary, our mother. May your word be fruitful in us. Open to us the treasures of your love. Give us courage when things go wrong. Strengthen us with faith in you, with hope in your promises and with love of your will. Open to us the treasures of your love. We say together the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let the splendour of the resurrection light up our hearts and minds, Lord, scattering the shadow of death and bringing us to the radiance of eternity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Have a good day.